And now in Nanning, China, the World Championships of Gymnastics, the women's all-around final. What a great run it's been for USA Gymnastics for the last 10 years. Carly Patterson, Nastia Lukin, Gabby Douglas, and now Simone Biles and Kyla Ross looking for individual success. And Nastia, they had fabulous success in the team final. They were dominant. They really were dominant. Here's Kyla Ross on vault. She showed exactly what she is capable, but Simone Biles right there, she was by far the leader of the team during this night and you know there was nobody close to even catching them during this team final. Tim, as we've seen under Marta Caroli, the American gymnasts have the finish with the hands. They have the finish with the feet. They are elegant. They're graceful, powerful. And they don't fall. And that is what is so critical. They have all of the intricate gymnastics components, as you said, Al, but they also don't make mistakes. So Kyla Ross helped set up Team USA in the team final, and then Simone Biles was able to put the exclamation point on. You know, and she has just been, ever since last year at the World Championships, winning that all-around title. This year, she just looks even better. To the floor they went. And Kyla, the only holdover from the London 2012 Olympics, was tremendous, as was this young lady right here. Michaela Skinner, one of the most powerful athletes in the world. The only problem is the most powerful athlete in the world follows her, Simone Biles. But this was tremendous. And then Simone Biles. So this was a phenomenal routine. I remember watching podium training, and she did this element right there, and there was a gasp from the crowd. All the gymnastics experts throughout the world, and they're all like, how is it possible she can be this powerful? She just is. Yeah, you could truly hear the oohs and the ahs from the crowd. It's not just the oohs and ahs from the crowd, it's the oohs and ahs from the second best in the world. And they're just so amazed by her in incredible power. Like, I, I, you know, see it again right here. Normally, gymnasts would be doing that pass as their first tumbling pass, and she does it almost at the end of her routine. And then last year, her dismount is just so unique. You know, it really is. She just, and not only is it unique, because like this pass as well, gymnasts typically do it at the beginning of their routine. She almost looks like she walks into that tumbling pass, lands with such ease. But I'll tell you, that smile, it just sells the whole thing. It was even a standing ovation from her teammates as the American women came together and remember the pressure three scores up three scores count they get through it and win the gold medal and now it's the women's all-around final Nastia handicap the heavy players here well we have quite a great group this year Kyla Ross got the silver medal in the all-around competition last year Larissa Yordaki from Romania has looked phenomenal this week in China and really hoping to get an individual medal today of course, Aliyah Mustafina, who has been the leader of Russian gymnastics the past few years. And the defending world all-around champion, Simone Biles, is looking to get a second gold medal. It is the women's all-around at the World Gymnastics Championships next on NBC. Our coverage of the 2014 World Gymnastics Championships from Nanning, China continues here on NBC. And now it's the very glamorous women's all-around. This really is it, Nastia, right? This is the 
the really big headline showdown that you think about when you're a young girl and you think about possibly getting to a point like this in your career? Yeah, without a doubt. And Simone Biles was able to do that last year at the World Championships. And nobody has won back-to-back -back World Championship all-around titles since Svetlana Korkina in 2001, 2003. There was no all-around championships in 2002. So Simone is looking to do that. And Horkina, Tim, had to be an inspiration for Mustafina and Yordaki at the young age that they were at when she was so great. Yeah, absolutely. And she's actually been here in Nanning, China. She is a member of the political party in Russia. Here is Yao Jinan from China so far. The women from China have been a little bit disappointing. Now, Nastia, final warm-ups. So what happens when you're in final warm-ups and you have a bad landing like that? You know, final warm-ups are, it's actually, it could be good or bad. You know, some people like to carry it over to their competition, however they do, but it's best to turn the page and really just get your body moving because, you know, they haven't vaulted in a few hours since they did the general warm-up. So Larissa Yordaki of Romania. And when you're a gymnast from Romania, it's like being on the Yankees. Yeah, but she is trying to get a little redemption for that Romanian team who struggled tremendously here in Nanning, China. A great ball, beautiful double twisting, laid out Yurchenko. I'll tell you, she really carried that team. Disappointing fourth place, but in a lot of ways, they were lucky to stay in that position, just one shy of winning the medal, but it is a very big rebuilding time for Romania at this point. Nice score, 15.066. We'll see what kind of a mood the judges are in today. This Team USA, Simone Biles and Kyla Ross, Jenny Liang, the coach, and here is Aliyah Mustafina, who came home from the London Olympics with four medals. And like Yordaki, Mustafina basically carried the Russian effort to a bronze medal. Same vault. Nicely done, a little bit form in the air, but you see those ankles are both heavily taped. The head coach, Rodionko of Russia said, her ankle, will it ever get better? No, it's a permanent injury. You see a little sloppy though, but what she does well, look at the posture when she's landing. She's very upright and just the smallest hop. Nastia, who wins, you or Aaliyah in a stare down? <laughs> I think it would be a pretty epic battle. <laughs> and Tim, as you said, their head coach now has changed. Alexander Alexandrov has actually moved to Brazil to be the head coach there. So a little bit of a you know, process of kind of trying to fit the team back together for them. Well, here's the it girl in American gymnastics right now, Simone Biles. And she really is the it girl. She could leave China with five gold medals. Huge vault. Oh. <laughs> and it has just been consistent and identical every single day that she has competed. What makes it huge? Everything about that vault is just spectacular. I don't think anybody, definitely nobody in the women's side performs it like she does. Well, Michaela Maroney, she, she and Michaela really get air that I don't think anybody else does. Remember in 2012, we put a, a split screen and we showed Kohei Uchimura and Michaela doing it. And Michaela actually rose higher than Kohei, and that is very similar to what Michaela can do. It's spectacular. And a great start. Huge. 15.866. And Simone Biles says, chase that, everybody. And that's that's very much expected from Simone. You'll see a challenge later on when she goes to the uneven bars and balance beam where anything can happen. Vanessa Ferrari from Italy is actually the world all-around champion from 2006. And has really looked great here in China this week. You know, it's... It's not often you can stay on top for that many years, but she really has, in my opinion, has looked better this year than she even did last year. I would agree. This is an upgraded vault for her. Actually, she did this years ago when she won that world all-around title way back in 2006, as you said. I think you were competing back then, Nastia. <laughs> I sure was. 14.866, so 
Just about a full point less than Simone Biles. Now Kyla Ross. You know, and Kyla has a little bit of a lower difficulty than Simone does on this event, but what she does so great is her execution here. Is very clean, has great height and rotation. Very nicely done. You see she is bandaged on her left hip and groin area. She told me after the first day of competition that tape is all that's holding her together, Nastia. Oh no, not again. Sounds familiar. <laughs> and it's familiar because at one point when Nastia was trying to come back from injuries, she looked a little like this with a lot of tape. And uh, one of us, I think it was me, said something that she remembers to this day. But it was what she overcome, and it's what Kylo's trying to overcome, 15.166. That kinesiology tape, that's pretty new. Did you get a chance to use that stuff? Does it work? You know, towards the end of my career, I think it definitely worked for me. I think people are a little iffy about it. And now Yao Jinan of China. What a huge win for the Chinese men. And, you know, China came away with the silver medal, but they were not good in the team competition. Lots of falls. What it came down to is the rest of the world at this point is, is not all that great. They were there to capitalize and get that silver medal, but they'd like a lot more. It was a good job, and I'll tell you, her legs have just not looked right. This entire time in Nanning, she was at the Asian Games just a couple of weeks ago, and looking at video, she looked so much more powerful and just a little bit more together. Everything has looked hard and labored for her with you know, vaulting the, and floor exercise. Yeah, and these two competitions were pretty much back to back for these athletes, so you know she's probably a little exhausted at this point. A step out of bounds didn't help either, and she gets a 14.5. Three, three. So after one rotation, it's Simone Biles' world, and we're just living in it. On to the second rotation after this. The 2014 World Championships are looking a lot like the 2013 World Championships when it was Simone Biles and Kyla Ross of the United States. Uneven bars now in rotation two. And Nasty, we're going to see two of the major players, Aliyah Mustafina of Russia and Simone Biles. How do you handicap things now going into this? Well, you know, Aliyah Mustafina just really hasn't seemed to be at her best, especially on this event. She has a little bit lower difficulty than she has in the past, but just like in true Russian typical form, she has had such great execution. But yeah, she, she's done easier routines than she's capable of. I don't know what we're going to see here, but not just easier, quite a bit easier. <laughs> Has a great look and is light on the uneven bars. Kind of flies from one bar to the next. Right here, big combination. Actually, that's where she's capable of doing something a little bit more. Gorgeous landing. But you're saying this is a little watered down? You know what it is? She didn't do a few of the connections that she has in the past, which, you know, of course, would bring her difficulty level pretty far down. But she was clean, and that is what she is great at. But handicapping this event, if you compare Simone Biles to Aliyah on the uneven bars, Aliyah is almost as dominant as Simone is on vaulting over her on the uneven bars. So this then is going to be Simone Biles' weakest it's apparatus. Un it's unquestionably her weakest apparatus. She struggled and had almost a major fall in the qualifying round. Did not compete uneven bars in the team finals. She once told me that she was so looking forward to becoming elite because at that point she could stop doing bars altogether <laughs> like Alicia Sacramoni. And then she became the world all-around champion. Very tricky combination right there. Already 
through the part that gave her problems in qualifying. Well, you know, that was a really great routine from her, but like we saw from Mustafa, and not as much difficulty Simone does in her routine, but I think she really just wanted to get through that routine and move on to the next two events. But there were no obvious mistakes, were there? No, no, it's just, it's, she does have some little form, and some of the handstand positions aren't great, but as Nastia says, just get through it. She's got beam, and she is the best in the world on her last event, floor exercise. 14.533, she is still the leader. More coverage of the World Gymnastics Championships after this. Saturday, November 1st, Horse Racing's Hollywood ending is on NBC as the world's fastest thoroughbreds compete in the richest event in horse racing, the Breeders' Cup. Coverage begins on NBCSN, and it all leads up to the classic in primetime. Saturday, November 1st, on NBC. Can Kyla Ross and Simone Biles go back to back again in the World Gymnastics Championship women's all around? Well, of course, Kyla might tell you she wouldn't mind the top spot by herself. Absolutely. And she is just beautiful on this event. She is a little bit taller than some of the other girls, so she has a beautiful line. Had a little bit of a growth spurt after the 2012 Olympics. She said it actually helped her get a better technique, become more graceful. She truly is graceful <laughs> to watch. Absolutely. Yeah, it could happen. She is one of the toughest competitors, unfazed by anything. And that's the most important thing. You gotta hit four routines. Small hop on the landing, but a very good job there from Kyla Ross. This element called a Shaposhnikova with a half turn. You see a little bit of a feet separation there. Another release right here. Very nicely done. Double layout. You see that form that we've been talking about and beautiful toes, knees, extension. And that's what she's really known for. She gets a 14.7 on the uneven bars. Nasty, if you had to pick a word for the Chinese gymnasts here on the women's side, would you say disappointing is the right word? You know, so far they have been disappointing. Watching them in training and all week long, they are so great, especially on this event, the uneven bars. But when they need to perform, they have just not been able to be consistent. And she fell in the team finals, as did her teammate, Chun, Chun Song. And really, when I came in and watched the Chinese women on bars, I thought that they were the most impressive team in the world by far on that event. Almost as dominant as the USA was on vaulting. Right here, big release and does it well. Look at how the cables are swinging back and forth. The Chinese keep the bars so loose. I'm not really sure I don't know how either. that's to their advantage, but they seem to be able to do very well with that. Well, that was fabulous. And they could have used that <laughs> in the team final. Yao Jinan gets them to their feet here in Nanning, China. But as all the women move to rotation three, Kyla Ross has been nudged to third by Mustafana, and it's still Biles in front. Always love the ending that looks like that. Wow. Just the Chinese have always been so great on this event. 15.533, a great score, which will help her recover from that low vault score. And China rescue a medal out of this. The always dangerous balance beam is the next destination. Back in Nanning, China. And the last time Nastia Lukin was in this country, 
It was in 2008 in Beijing. Who knew that she would soon join us in the booth to talk about the sport that she loves? But the people in China didn't forget you on this trip back, did they? Yeah, it was very special to be back. My first time back in China and, and just being in the arena, the cheers, the chants, the Chinese flags that filled that arena were very similar to what it felt like six years ago. Here are the standings at the halfway point here. Simone Biles has the lead, almost three-tenths of a point. And uh, Kyla Ross has slipped out of the medal slot right now. She's on the outside with China's Yao Jinan moving into the third position. Kyla Ross in fifth. Okay, the balance beam and Simone Biles. And she is great on this event. We keep talking about how powerful she is on vault and floor, but she actually qualified first into the balance beam individual finals. That spinorama is great. Yeah, it's, it's actually very difficult as well. She is great, but you got to stay on the apparatus. There's no question. It's been a little bit shaky on this tumbling run right here. Just a little bit off, but... Missing that connection, which will... Oh, she, yeah, she just does seem a little bit off. You have to wonder if she's getting a little bit nervous knowing that she's at the top halfway through. Well, really, I think she probably believes that if she can just get through this routine and pull off this super hard dismount, which she does, it's going to be hard for anybody to catch her. Remember, she's got what I think is her best event as you look at her sister and her mom and dad next to them. And this combination, three elements in a row, actually gives her an extra tenth of bonus. But there are a few little, you know, quirky spots in the routine, but this was not at all. Just a gigantic dismount. And now over on floor, Shang Chun Song. So used to China just churning out gymnast after gymnast after young gymnast after really young gymnast. And she is a little out. on the balance beam and the vision of what Kyla is and what this gymnast is to me it's like they should be in different leagues and this is actually not her first world championship she competed in Antwerp in 2013 she's really good but there are disadvantages to you know being this small and not having the mass that some of the other gymnasts have. For example, on vaulting, she just can't compress the board, so she does a very easy vault. You know, to me, just not as impressive as some of the other gymnasts, especially on this event, but you know, she was able to stay on her feet, I guess, which is great for her. Okay, on the balance beam, Simone Biles at 14.766. That will keep her in first place. But that could have been a lot better for Simone. She, as Nastia mentioned, she gave up a, a bunch of different connections there. was a little bit clunky. How's Vanessa Ferrari on the beam? You know, she's, she's good. You know, I think she probably is a little bit stronger on some of the other events, but has been consistent so far in China. And you know, she kind of disappeared from the world of gymnastics at the top level. And as she got older, she just 
she got better and better. She was criticized when she was a little one when she won that world title in 2006 as not having enough artistry and she kind of embraced that and has really transformed her gymnastics. was the anchor of the Italian team. Dismont, she does a round off double pike. Nicely done, another solid routine from Vanessa Ferrari. 23 year old hanging around with the teenagers. You see the Olympic rings tattoo on the back of her neck. Chum Song of 14.166. You saw that bar score, though. She was in the 12s. And Vanessa Ferrari still in the medal story, trying to get back in the medal game is Kyla Ross. Simone Biles, her American teammate, still in the lead. Still in the third rotation in the women's all-around final in Nanning, China. Al Troutwick, Nastia Luke, and Tim Daggett. And right now... Kyla Ross, and this is where she can make up some ground, right, Nastia? She really can, you know, and this is the event. We just talked about her being great on the uneven bars, but she is just stunning to watch on the balance beam. Has a lot of maturity. You know, so many gymnasts have to rush through. Every finish and every step or dance move, she just does it so well and beautifully. You know, one of the major reasons Kyla was a part of the 2012 Olympic effort for the USA was because she is so stable on the balance beam and she delivered in that team final and was a major part in why the USA was so dominant a couple years ago in London. Oh, this is a great routine. Just the dismount left, a double tuck. And that was great. You know, it's it's one of those events that you, everybody just really hopes to get through and stay on the beam. But she did that and more. She was just, she was great on that routine. And now our first look in these world championships at Ellie Black from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And I'll tell you, she has been doing a tremendous job at these championships. Up until this point, the highest finisher in an all-around was Victoria Moores from Canada in the 10th spot in the 2013 Worlds, and she's flirting right in that general area. Very difficult fault, but touches the ground, so that's going to cost her a little bit. Could have been a very big number for her, but even with that, a great job for this young lady. So let's see, how did Kyla Ross do? Very well, 14.433. At this moment, she is in, in second place behind Simone Biles. And back to Ellie Black, she gets a 13.9. And it's going to knock her down a little bit. Let's see if Yao Jinan can keep it going. She was phenomenal on her last event, the uneven bars, and she's capable of being that good and maybe even a little more right here.
This is great. She really tumbles on this. Doesn't jump, but rebounds. Fantastic. Beautiful turn. Everything they do, they're not only great at the tumbling on the beam, but they are phenomenal on their leaps, connections, their pirouettes, their dance is beautiful. And this event in the uneven bars is where they really need to do very well because they don't do as well on the vault and the floor exercise. A little bit under on that, but another strong routine. Watch them in training prior to the event starting, and look at those toes touching her head. That's how it's supposed to be done. The coaches were brutal on them. The slightest arm check or little bit of form on anything. Watch another one right here. Super dis difficult. You saw her head was tilted back. That makes it so hard. You lose sight of the beam. Oh, almost. Fourteen point five six six. Nicely done. And she is in a metal spot at the moment. And now back to Larissa Yordaki from Romania. And Larissa is really great on this event. She's actually often compared to the great Romanian gymnast Nadia Comaneci. And she said, although I'm flattered to be compared to her, I'm Larissa and I want to be myself. Very nicely done. Back handspring into a backflip with a full twist. Their big pass right here. She's actually capable of doing a routine with two flipping elements with a full twist. And that very, very determined, difficult double turn. an auspicious start to her gymnastics career. She was at a local gym and coach invited her in. Mom said no. Larissa stayed. At the end of the workout, she did not want to leave. Beautiful triple twist at the end and that was, that was really fantastic right there. She's always been capable of being in the hunt for getting on that podium, but somehow has, in the major events, has not delivered in the all-around. But today, wow, she's been, she's been great. Huge full twisting, back tuck. And that element is very difficult, especially to start your routine off of that. And she does it so well, you see her toes really gripping onto that balance beam. And this dismount, a round off back, handspring, triple twist. And this is something you would see somebody typically do on the floor exercise. And that's about as well as I've ever seen anybody do that dismount. Very, very hard. A you know, great position. It's very difficult to get that triple twist all the way around and not have it devalued into a two and a half. And I am sure she did get credit for the triple. Last performance of this rotation for Aliyah Mustafa. She has been right there in the picture. She has not been able to catch Simone Biles, but she has been in second place. Yurdaki gets a 15.1. That puts her in medal contention heading into the final rotation. Yeah, she's actually just a, uh, I think, a few tenths behind Simone Biles, which is shocking because nobody's been able to do that. Nobody's really been able to be even close <laughs> to Simone. Mustafina was 
the world all-around champion in 2010. Suffered a devastating injury a little bit after that. Torn ACL. Battled back from that. And as I mentioned earlier, has been dealing with really an ankle that just doesn't respond. You know, as much as she would love an all-around medal, she kind of did say her goal was to help the team. And she has been, oh, Ooh. that's going to be a big deduction. You know, Team Russia was really decimated by injury, as a lot of the programs throughout the world were. Victoria Komova still not ready. Kesnia Afeniseva still injured, and Paseka were all in contention to make this Russian team, all of them not healthy enough to make the trip to China. Wow, great landing. That'll erase some of the memory, but this was actually quite nice. A standing Arabian, little bit of a balance check there. But right here, look at the hips. The break in the angle right there, that's a sizable deduction. Switch half, which she does very well. And this is what really sealed that routine. The double back, with of course a stick. <sighs> She uses a lot of tape. Yeah, she does. 14.341. She is just on the outside of the metal picture. We're heading to the final rotation. And that's floor exercise for Simone Biles and Kyla Ross. And for both of them, that is often a very good thing. I'm Costas and Dan Patrick host Football Night in America. Coverage begins at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, only on NBC. There are the standings. It's a very slim 13 hundredths of a point lead for Simone Biles trying to go back to back on the world championship stage. And Kyla Ross would love now to have a finish that was like last year's world championships when she won the silver medal. What are you thinking, Tim, as you look at the standings? Well, actually, I thought that Simone had a bigger lead, about three tenths. And as you just mentioned, it's even smaller than that. You know, really, it is still Simone Biles to win or lose, though, at this point, because she's so great on floor. Janan has just been fantastic here today. She started a little rough on vault, but did about as good as she could do. And Mustafina is also great on this event, but not nearly as good as Simone. So, you know, my opinion, she won't be able to pass her, but she can definitely vie for a silver medal. fantastic to live in Italy and be Italian and have the last name <laughs> Ferrari. Yeah. She's actually got the speed and power of one. At her age, this routine is jam-packed with high-flying difficulty. Trademark skill for Vanessa. A standing backflip out of that full twisting double. She likes to try to rebound a little more than that, but still very interesting.
Well, you know, that was a great routine. Probably not quite enough for a medal at this year's World Championships, but she really did have a great day, and she has just gotten so much better, in my opinion, in the last year. Without a doubt. Double pike and a great landing to finish. Very intricate tumbling run. This is a double twisting, double somersault. We're gonna see that from both Yordaki and Biles. 14.7, that puts her in first right now. There's plenty of more gymnastics coming up. And here's Kyla Ross. Nasty, what do you think? I mean, she's got the world championship gold already here at this event. She's got an Olympic gold at the Olympics. Does it take the pressure off a little bit when it comes to a day like this for her? Well, you know, not necessarily because she has had the gold medals in the team competition, but she has never really won a big international competition like the World Championships or Olympic Games and the individual all around. If you ever think that Kyla Ross is going to succumb to pressure, then you don't know Kyla Ross. Because she just always seems to find a way to get the job done. It truly is a battle, though, for someone that has been to an Olympics to come back and to be her height. It is a big challenge, but thus far, she's been able to handle it tremendous. You know, she really did have a great day. She was very consistent throughout the day. A little bit of a lower score than we'll see from Simone Biles, most likely, but she did great. She hit every single routine, and, you know, now she's just crossing her fingers. She might be able to make it onto that podium. All right, we're playing king of the hill right now. Ferrari was the first one to the hill, and Kyla just knocked her down. So it's Kyla Ross and Ferrari, now Yao Jinan. And she needs a 13.6 to surpass Kyla for that top spot as of right now. Which is possible, but like I said earlier, on both vaulting and floor, everything has just looked really hard for her in that name. It was great on the uneven bars. Elegant on balance beam, but here she needs to show a little bit more power. Beautiful turn and you know, we started noticing that some of the gymnasts were wearing socks, which to me is actually very interesting. I don't know how they don't slip on their tumbling, but it helps with all the pirouetting skills.
tries to cover it up, yeah, but I don't think... That's going to fool too many people. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not thinking world championship medal worthy? No, not. That was just... Uh, there were too many big errors in that routine, and that last one right there. Really. It was a full point deduction if they get it right because you put your hands down, show support, it's a point off. And she really did try to cover it up by doing a cartwheel out of it, but... Really low, you see that step forward, and she was going to put her hands down, and so... Now let's see how the judges got it. Yeah, they saw it too, 12.833. So, when we come back, the conclusion of the women's all-around and all the big hitters, Yordaki, Mustafana, Simone Biles, still to come. The women's all-around world championships in Nanning, China, come down to the next three routines. In the mix, all the heritage that comes with being a Romanian female gymnast, Larissa Yordaki. She needs a 13.2 which is very doable. Had to put her in first. Big tumbling run. Oh, boy. One foot was definitely out. That would be a tenth of a point. That other foot was precariously co close. Both are out. It's three tenths of a point. routine wow and so often we've seen Larissa not be able to put four together she did today that will be plenty to move her into that first position but we still as you see there have Mustafana and Simone to go very difficult first tumbling run double twisting double somersault in this round of back handspring, triple twist. A little bit of the crossed feet, but she definitely gets it counted as a triple twist. And she loves what she's seeing. Guaranteed a medal for Larissa Yordaki. First place for now, but she's done the math, and quickly, there are only two more women to go. She's going to leave Nanning China with a medal. So it all comes down now to uh, Aliyah Mustafana and Simone Biles. And Mustafana needs a 15.2 to be ahead of Yordaki. Which that is a very big number on floor exercise. In the qualifying round, she only got a 14.5, so it's gonna be very difficult. It will definitely not happen.
ask you, can you compare her compared to what she was in London? You know, not quite. Not right at this moment. I think she was definitely a little bit stronger, more precise, more consistent. She sat down and she sat down early, and that takes care of that. And you know, she had such great height and even rotation in the skill. It was almost like she had it and she was trying to stick it. Now, you got to remember, this is the third full all around she's competing in. Did all four in qualifying, all four in the team finals. And just maybe was a little bit, uh, and it wasn't just that she was competing in the team finals, she had Russia completely on her back for both of those competitions. Exhausting. 13.4 and change. She knows what that means. Yordaki's loving it. She is guaranteed at least a silver medal. And you know, I'm happy for her because she's been capable of being in that category for a long time, but just hasn't been able to put four together. Kyla Ross is guaranteed a medal as well for the United States. And Simone Biles needs a 14.6, which is almost a walk in the park for her. She just needs to stay on her feet and stay in bounds. This is called a Biles, named after her. Oh. Nanning. <laughs> well, without a doubt, Simone Biles is the defending back-to-back -back world all-around champion. And everybody knows it in the arena. Larissa knows it. Kyla knows it. It was a lot closer than most people would have thought. You wink like five times. An exhausting exercise. <laughs> we'll wait for it to be official, but it's all but official. First American woman since Shannon Miller to go back to back in a world championships. Just can't compare. Nobody else even comes close. When you talk about po power, look at the second flip is still going up higher. Finishing with a full twisting double back. She does that better at her at the end of her routine than a lot of gymnasts do at the beginning. Yes, sir. 15.066. Kyla gets the bronze. Yordaki the silver. one of the hardest things to think about winning a world championship and then to think about doing it again yeah. in a sport that comes down to tenths and hundredths. Absolutely. Great performance today from Larissa Yordaki. Tremendous athlete.
bringing a little bit of pride back to that Romanian team. Here you see Marta Caroli, the head coach of the U.S. team. And I think at this point, two years out, you can really get excited about the possibilities for USA Gymnastics in Rio. Absolutely. Biles wins it by half a point, then Yordaki and Ross. Here is Simone Biles about going back to back. Um, it actually blows my mind. Like, if I think about it right now, I'm just like, what? It's just like, I don't know. It's just really weird, but it's really cool. It was just amazing to go out there and compete with your best friend and just have so much fun. She's got that American teenage kind of sound. Back to back is as good as it gets. Coming up next, the men's all around final. In Nanning, the women's all around concluded, and at the medal presentation, something sort of funny and weird <laughs> happened. There was a bee on Simone Biles' bouquet, and she doesn't look like she is into bees at all, and it just kept following her around. And she just said, I'm going to get rid of the <laughs> the target of the bee. <laughs> Biles, Yordaki, and Kyla Ross. And I, I think eventually order was restored, guys. <laughs> and the bee did buzz off. Now it's time for the men's 